Good evening, and welcome to another transcendental episode of Diatribes from the Voice of Doom. Now, here's your transhuman and transmogrified host, Voice of Doom. Hello. I am back. I don't really have much to say, but I'm going to talk about a few things because the world's coming to an end, and I told you a long time ago how it's going to happen. So we'll get into the nitty-gritty now. I noticed that the touts and the media, um, you know, political analysts, and the commentators are scurrying around and um, basically worrying about what's going to happen with this Ukrainian thing now that it's come to a head. And we all know how it came to a head, and I already told you why. But that will be shunt aside because they will go into their own bloodbath. And we will try to keep the fire burning by sending weapons and fortifying our NATO allies and just goading them on to keep it going because we need war. Because the ultimate goal is to get rid of people by hook or crook. But I want to get into another uh, subject which has to do with what a long, strange trip it's been. And if you were my age, you would know where that line came from. It came from a song called Truckin' by the Grateful Dead. And the Grateful Dead were an interesting band because, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think they had that many great songs, but they certainly had a good following because they built an aura around themselves that had to do with getting disciples about rock, pretty mundane rock at that, but rock, okay. So they did that, and they made a mark in history, and now the trucking is going to start trucking, and that's the subject that I'm really interested in, because it's closer to home. Now, apparently this convoy of American truckers, high-paid union workers, has started in Adelanto. I've been to Adelanto many times, but I've never stopped there except for maybe a burger or gas because Adelanto is the kind of place in California that unless you live there and that's your home, then it's a place you pass through. And that's just what everybody does. Everybody in America, it's a crossroads. It's right in the center of where the Sierras end and the Mojave ends and L.A. proper begins. And when I mean L.A., I mean the whole metropolitan, huge, massive area. You get off the Mojave and you're on some rolling hills and driving and you're behind a truck and you are pissed because you're waiting for the turnout and... So you can get ahead, and you reach Adelanto, and you get gas, and then you get on, I believe it's the 80, I don't remember all the freeways, the 10 and the 80, and all of them meet in that same area, and that takes you to LA, or it takes you to San Diego, or it takes you to Victorville, which takes you to Las Vegas, it's, and if you go west then or east excuse me then you're heading out into the vast wilderness where you're going to eventually get to a house that is white and i haven't kept on all, all the details but i do get details from people as i'm working so it's fun to have a bunch of magas in town that 
keep me apprised of what's going on. And there's 38,000 truckers heading toward Washington, D.C., and they're battening down the hatches over in D.C. I don't know if they hope that it's chaos or if they want to prevent chaos. But if I know the Democratic Party, I think they're hoping for chaos. Because the more chaos they generate between now and the election, the more they can do a lot of shenanigans during the election. Because there's going to be a lot more than just truckers. But let's talk trucking. Now, trucks are big. We all know that. And they're formidable. And I really don't know what would happen if push came to shove. And I'm very interested to see it. So I'm going to watch with breathless anticipation what happens as these truckers meander across the United States. Because if they start with 38,000 and they're going across the horrible no man's land, the flyover country that has no bearing on what happens in America, he might be up to like 100,000 by the time they reach DFC. And 100,000 trucks, even 38,000 trucks, is going to clog up the works. It's going to cause a big problem. So what are they going to do? Well, Petrie's going to give his State of the Union just about the time these truckers roll into the driveway. And he's going to say nothing, and he's going to tout himself and say how hard he's been working to try to alleviate the problems of the previous, and I mean last, president. All of his horrible decisions that caused America to just go into decline, and he's struggling, and he's trying his best to correct all those problems by cutting off our energy sources, by inciting war, by ending wars, if you want to call it that, in a very stupid way, by ruining the economy, by causing inflation, which was going to happen anyway, but he's only making it worse, by ruining the supply chain, by going with CRT is a basis to make decisions about who's going to lead us and making sure that it's equitable, even though they're not the best people for the jobs. <coughs> and everybody knows it. So I'm more interested in the truckers, because that's closer to home than the Ukraine. And I was looking at the map and looking at their, you know, the touts and the, the commentators, you know, they, they mean well. So they want to give us as much detail as they can. So they're treating this incursion and this pretext that I've already talked about in a very, you know, data-like, you know, here's a map and here's where the Russians are and here's these countries and here's what these countries are and Here's where the Russians are surrounding and blah dee blah blah blah. And why did they we let them get away with that in the first place and why did we let them get in a position to surround a country that they think is theirs? Well, you can talk about that in the future when they dig themselves out of the rubble and decide to write a history book about why it all happened and whether it's true or not, well, it depends on who writes it, doesn't it? So the truckers head into the east, and it's a long journey, very flat, and they're going to pick up steam, and if people refuse to service them because they're afraid that their bank accounts might be frozen, people refuse to support them because their cyber wallet may be frozen then they will simply go with their own devices, which I'm sure they have. If I was a trucker, I'd know exactly where to get gas if I was in a pickle. 
and they're going to head east and everyone in the forget about them deplorable country uh, states are going to help them i know it and everybody knows it because the deplorable states are fed up with the bullshit and the whole country is and they're they should have done this a year ago but it's come to a head where we're not going to take it anymore. Now, trucks. It'd be one thing if Antifa or BLM got into their Toyotas, their 82 Toyotas, and headed to the Capitol to protest. But they're not going to protest because their guy won. So they have nothing to protest about. And if they did do that, they might burn down half of Washington, D.C., and that's all good. They can't burn down those monuments, and they can't burn down the those great edifices that we made for a cause and for principles. They won't be able to burn those down, because it's hard to burn marble and granite. But they might burn down their own tenements, just south or east or just outside D.C., now they can do that. They'll burn down a Popeye's chicken. But the truckers are a different matter. And they're a different breed. They're not Antifa. They're not BLM. They're working class Americans who have big trucks that are huge. And they're fed up. And if I was Petri dish, I wouldn't be sitting on my laurels. I wouldn't be thinking about what a great speech I'm going to make. And from what I heard just now on the radio on the way home from work is like Democrats are going to rebut or going to have a, you know, you know, they always have the Republicans or the oppositions give a statement after the State of the Union, which is like shooting fish. But now the progressive D's want to give their rebuttal to Petri Dish, so he's in a pickle. He's in a real bind, because nobody likes him. Nobody. And he's going to be the State of the Union after a year, a little over a year, and try to paint over and put a nice face on the fact that he's been a failure in every sense of the word, in everything he's ever done. Every moment of the day, Thousands, 3,000 possibilities in any given life moment. In any given life moment, your life could go 3,000 different ways. And he's failed in every way. All 3,000, every moment. Can't think of anything that he's done in the last year and two months that, that I would say is laudable. Except that maybe he holds his ice cream cone and doesn't lose the ice cream and it falls on the ground and he starts to cry. But this is going to be an ongoing saga because I'm going to follow these truckers because I think that's going to be a very interesting thing. You worry about the Ukraine border and worry about the Baltic states while you're at it. And worry about what China might be thinking or what they might be doing. And then in the meantime, the truckers are heading east and they're putting fences around the capital. So I am very much interested to see what happens. So I'm going to leave this kind of on a cliffhanger. I didn't say anything. I think I said what everybody knows. But I said it in my own inimitable style. And we will see what happens over the next four or five days up until the State of the Union, which we all know what it is. So we don't need a corrupt send our old fool to explain it to us that's absurd so the awakening we're awakening up the awakening is happening the apocalypse is happening the great awakening the great the apocalypse means to show to open the truth to people they're going to see what's going to happen they're not going to like it Everything's going to be bad. They can take off the uh, gas tax for like 10 cents just to 
alleviate the fact that it's going to go up to about 10 bucks a gallon. That'll help, but it's going to be a saga, so we'll start this off trucking. What a long, strange trip it's been, and we'll go on from there, and thank you for listening.